us quickly turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 and 6. Hallelujah. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. <coughs> the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. He says, and lean not on your understanding. It is sometimes very difficult to trust the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We can trust the Lord in certain areas, but in certain things we are not able to trust the Lord. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Let us look into Psalm 62 and verse 8. Let us read what it says. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 62 and verse 8. Trust in him at all times, you people, pour out your heart before him, for God is a refuge for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Trust in him at all times. He does not say sometimes, not that on certain things we trust him, in certain things we cannot trust him. Oh, we say like, oh, this God can do, or this God cannot do. No, because God is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. So here the word of God, he says, trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him, for God is a refuge for us. Hallelujah. So let us look into Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 7 and 8. The book of Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8 clearly. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the water which spread out his roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the years of drought and will not cease from yielding fruit. He says, blessed is the man who will be blessed, what? Who trust in the Lord as hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a tree that is planted by the water. Hallelujah. That means what happened that you will not fear the heat. You will not fear but his leaves will be green and you will always not be even anxious. Why? Because you are trusting in the Lord. That's why he says you are blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why you are blessed uh, when you start trusting in the Lord. Why you trust in the Lord? Because he trusts you. According to Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3, let us see what does the word of God says in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Hallelujah. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Who trusts in you? God trusts in you. But sometimes we are not able to trust in God as how God trusts us. He says because he trusts in you. Hallelujah. And that's very much important, my brother, my sister in Christ, that we must always uh, trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Because He is trusting in you. Hallelujah. I always say that God is always in partnership with you. Without you, God can do nothing. Hallelujah. So that's way we need trust. If your marriage has to stand, you need trust from both sides. Not only from the husband, but even from the wife, both have, one have to trust one another, then only that marriage will uh, stand. But if you do not trust one another, the marriage will surely break up and it will end up in a divorce. Trust is very much important, my brother, my sister in Christ. So, you also, also the word of God is saying, just like how God trusts in you, you must also trust him though you cannot see. Like Abraham. Abraham believed in God. The Bible says he was considered righteous. When God called Abraham, Genesis chapter 11, huh? God said, leave everything and walk into the land for which I will show you a land flowing of milk and honey, the promised land. Abraham was already a rich man, but he was an idol worshipper. He did not know the true God. He did not know the living God. But when God called him, God said, leave everything. God did not say, bring your wealth. God did not say, you know, you need to bring your cattle. God did not say, bring this, bring that one. Even God never told that, bring your father or bring even your nephew. God said, you and your wife come. God instructed Abraham for what? To, for him and his wife to come. God never said, bring Lot and come. God never said, bring your father and come. You see clearly, when God tells you something to do, you must be obedient to what God tells you. Don't try to bring other people, it will not work up with God. So in meantime, what happened? While they were still coming to Canaan, who died? Abraham's father died. 
and after that uh, who was like a thorn in the flesh for abraham it was lot and that's where what god had to do there was a dispute between the husband of lot and the husband of abraham and abraham said we are like brothers lot let us not fight and immediately what happened they divided the land and then we know that lot what did he choose he chose the land which was full of green tree which are the fertile plains and everything and he thought that is thing you know that's what sometimes your eyes will deceive you and finally where did he land up he landed up in sodom and gomorrah which were all sodomites hallelujah which mean homosexual people were living in the land till uh, lot was separated is that when god did not bless abraham because why he did not obey so that's why what is very much important you must understand my brother and sister and cry is no use of only saying that i trust in god you must also be obedient uh, to what god says hallelujah if you want to see the blessing upon your life is not only just say oh lord i trust but you must be obedient and do what god tells you to do that's what in joshua chapter 1 was 7 where god is speaking to joshua let's see what does the word of god says in joshua chapter 1 and verse 7 Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded and do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. What is telling you clearly? He said that you must observe and do everything. You must be obedient and ready to do. You must be obedient and what you must do? You must be ready to do. Hallelujah. But there was a person who trusted in God, who listening to one of his servant, Hale girl, who was brought. Who was that? If you look into Second Kings chapter five and verse two, there is the narrative of Naaman, the Syrian commander. Naaman in Second Kings chapter five was when the Syrians had gone down to raid and brought back a captive, a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited upon Naaman's wife. Here we see in the fifth chapter, Naaman, though he was a commander of the Syrian army, he was a man of valor. He was a powerful commander. But one thing he had, he had leprosy. Hallelujah. But here we see that uh, there was a girl who lived uh, with Naaman's wife hallelujah she was a girl from israel who knew the living god who knew the power of god Amen. hallelujah so what did she command her mistress and saying if only my master will go and meet the prophet who is in samaria what will happen he will be healed of his leprosy hallelujah now this man listened he said he trusted in the servant girl he trusted in what she said but this man was not obedient so if you look into verse 10 of second king chapter 5 verse 10 see what does the word of god says clearly and elisha sent a messenger to him saying go and wash in the jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean now see in verse 11 and 12 what is the the commander saying now but naaman became furious and got angry and went away and said he need i said to myself he will surely come out to me stand and call on the name of the lord is god and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy verse 12 see what he says clearly are not the abana and the papa the river of damascus better than all the water of israel could i not wash in them be clean so he turned and went away in a rage now see what the girl is telling now hallelujah that is a man and his servant came near and spoke to him and said my father if the prophet had told you to do something great would you not done it but how much more than he says to you wash and be clean that means this man was ready to trust the girl and walk all the come all the way to samaria but he was not obedient to do what the prophet elisha instructed him to do So here the girl is interventing and using and say, if the prophet had told you to do something great, will you not do? Because he was desperate for his miracle. Because you know, a person who is suffering from leprosy is not an ordinary issue. We know that because in the Old Testament, if you are suffering from leprosy, you have to declare to the public that you are unclean, unclean, unclean. You have to say because according to the Old Testament, leprosy means sin. Hallelujah! And the Bible says that a leper cannot enter into the tabernacle of the meeting unless the leper had to be cleansed according to the law of Moses. So this commander was in desperate, but this commander had pride. He says he was furious. He was angry because he expected that the prophet will come to him and do something great. 
you see but he was not ready to obey till the girl intervened and said if you have told you to do something so what happened is no use of i said oh i trust in god but you do not want to obey what uh, he has to do hallelujah that's what we see even in the wedding of cana we know in chapter 2 of john's gospel we know in the second chapter was two that they were running out of wine and immediately we know that mary came to her son jesus and said we are running out of wine what can we do clearly hallelujah and here we see that uh, the disciples must be thinking now where jesus is going to get the wine because the wine has already finished they must be thinking they must be thinking or they must be confused if you look into the gospel of john chapter 2 from verse 2 to 3 we see let's see let's let's read what does the word of god says in the gospel of john chapter 2 verse 2 onwards and when they ran out of wine the mother of jesus said to him they have no wine jesus said to a woman what does this concern have to do with me for my hour has not yet come hallelujah see verse 5 his mother said to the servant whatever he says do it so sometimes that god tells you to do something it appears to be foolish what god is telling me to do this i don't think this is from god they must be thinking but yeah the mother was obedient to the son and what she is telling yeah whatever he says do it Amen. don't question hallelujah don't doubt Amen. don't bring disbelief in your heart but do what he says so when they obeyed and they did exactly what jesus christ told them to do when they filled the pitchers with water what happened immediately there was a miracle and it was the best wine that has been served during the wedding hallelujah that's what they gave a report they said how is that that they preserved the best wine and give it in the last amen but only the disciples knew from where the wine had came but for them to receive that miracle for them to see that they had to be obedient and to listen to what uh, jesus said my brother and sister in christ thus way bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice and reverence is equal into witchcraft so when you trust in god you must also be obedient in what god tells you hallelujah sometimes what happens the people around you will try to disturb your faith hallelujah and that's what happened clearly we look in the life of jairus who was the leader of the synagogue if you look into matthew gospel in the gospel of mark chapter 5 was 22 and 23 here we see there is a ruler of the synagogue jairus hallelujah let us go into the gospel of mark chapter 5 from verse 22 to 23 and behold one of the rulers of the synagogue came jairus by name and when he saw him he fell at his feet hallelujah and begged him honestly saying my little daughter lies at the point of death come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will be she will live hallelujah that is a scenario was happening what is happening jesus christ is there and immediately he came and he fell at the feet of jesus christ and begged him and said my daughter lies at the point of death that means she is not she is not that means she is not dead but she is still alive you clearly come that you may lay a hand that she may heal her thing now see what happened in verse 35 and 36 of the same chapter let us see how things change over here in mark chapter 5 verse 35 and 36 clearly and behold one of the rulers of the and while he was one while he was still speaking someone of the ruler of the synagogue house who said your daughter is dead why trouble the teacher any future you see here yeah he is begging jesus christ and falling and he says you come lay your hand on my daughter she will live hallelujah was 36 see what jesus is telling as soon as jesus heard the word was spoken he said to the ruler of the synagogue do not be afraid but believe yeah. hallelujah you see clearly what happened because he knew his daughter was not dead before but while jesus was still there one of the messenger has come and told do not trouble the teacher your daughter is dead is no use of him like the doctor says is no use of the patient is dead what can you do when a person is dead you can't do anything but as long as you believe that even one person the person has life or you will try to bring that back that situation you try to make him come to alive you know but yeah but believe now see from 37 onwards what happening here 37 38 let's see let's read from there next what happened clearly 
in the Gospel of Mark chapter 5, verse 37 and 38. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. Let's see in the next two verse what does he say clearly over here. When he came in he said to them, why make this commotion and be? The child is not dead but sleeping. You see what type of statement Jesus is giving there. And they ridiculed him, but when he has put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was living. What they did? They are criticizing him. Because what he is telling? The child is not dead, but the child is sleeping. Because he knew he had the power to resurrect even the dead. But they are laughing. What is his type of statement is Jesus Christ doing? See next what he did. In verse 41 and 42, then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talita Kumin, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Hallelujah. Immediately the girl arose and walked for she was 12 years of age and they were overcome with great amazement. What happened? We clearly see in this type of situation that though the person came to Jesus the first time to get his daughter being prayed by Jesus, but then suddenly there was a shock and the shock shattered his faith. That's what happened when we are asking some people, suddenly we heard the phone ringing. The person is dead and gone. It is no use. But till then you are calling everyone, please pray, please pray, please pray, please pray, please pray. Please pray. And suddenly you will get a phone call saying, she is dead and gone. Now what has happened? Your faith is shattered. Your trust is gone. That's why they say, do not trouble the teacher for your daughter is dead. But what Jesus Christ says, do not doubt but believe. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says all things are possible only for those who believe. Hallelujah. And immediately what Jesus did in front of them, he resurrected a Jairus daughter. My brother and sister in Christ, sometimes we go through this type of situation. Sometimes we have trust in God and suddenly there is something coming on our way like a storm and suddenly what happened? Our trust which we had so much on God is shattered. You see clearly and that's what's important. But whereas Jesus Christ told to Jairus, he said do not doubt but believe. Hallelujah. And that's what we see that Jesus Christ was able to resurrect her. Jairus daughter. Hallelujah. My brother and sister in Christ. That's where the word of God says that we must always trust in God at every situation of our life. We must not doubt God. Amen. But there was a king who trusted in God before but in his last thing he was not able to trust God. In 2nd Chronicles chapter 15, let us see verse 2, he speaks of Asa a king. Asa this king, he found favor with the hand of God. Hallelujah. We see clearly in 2nd we see in Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 2. Let us read what does it say clearly about this person. Hallelujah. And he went out to meet the seer, went to him and said, Hear me, Asa and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found for you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. And then after that we see in the same chapter that God left him, God fought battles, everything. The Bible says for 35 years uh, his kingdom had peace. Hallelujah. Amen. There was peace in the kingdom of uh, King Asa because he depended upon God and he trusted in God. Hallelujah. And God fought all the battle. But in the 36th year of his reign, his heart totally changed. Hallelujah. When his heart totally changed, uh, you know what happened clearly? God, there was an enemy who attacked him. Hallelujah. And here what happened clearly? We know that in terms of trusting in God, he started to trust in his, uh, the neighboring country. Hallelujah. That his neighbor thinking that that person will uh, deliver him. Hallelujah. But here we see that uh, it was not able to be possible clearly. And let us look in the 16th chapter of 2nd Kings verse 12. Uh, what happened to King Asa? In 2nd Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 12.
and in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet and his malady was severe. Yet in his disease, he did not seek the Lord but the physician. Before that, we see that he trusted in God. God fought the battle for him. The favor of God was upon his life. God said that I will never leave you nor will I forsake you. For 35 years there was peace in his kingdom. He never had wars with his enemy. But when the 39th years what happened, he was diseased in his feet and his malady was severe. But he did not seek the Lord but the physician. That's what happened with many people. We don't seek the Lord but we start seeking the physicians. Hallelujah. And finally what happened? He died. My brother and sister in Christ, thus may I will always say, the Bible says, trust in the Lord at all times. All times! Not only when your health is good that you trust in God and when you are sick, you do not trust in God and you start trusting in the physician. That's what this king did. Though God blessed him, God gave him everything. But in the later stage of his life, the Bible says in his 39th year of his reign as king, what happened? He was diseased. But instead of seeking the Lord, God would have healed him. Amen. God was, would have healed him because healing was already in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. God healed many people in the Old Testament. But instead of seeking the Lord, what happened? He went and he seeked the physician. That's what happened. Instead of trusting in God, we are now trusting in whatever people are telling. The devil will put people in among you and you start listening to them. And what happened? You lose your trust in God. That is the work of the devil because he will want to divert your mind so that you don't trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's where the psalmist, see what does he say before I finish my message. In Psalm chapter 20 and verse 7, let's read what he says. In Psalm 20 and verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we'll remember the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. Many people in those days, they used to trust in chariots and horses. Hallelujah. They used to trust in the army. They think the bigger the army is, it's easy for us to win victory. Hallelujah. But uh, God does not deliver a person with uh, mighty strength. That's why I always say that whenever God fought the battle for any of his servants, you know clearly, he always fought with a very little amount, like a little number, I can say clearly, my boy. Because God does not need chariots, God don't need even horses to fight the battle. God is enough alone to fight the battle. You see, that's what I always say. Even when the Assyrian king, uh, Senacharib came and he challenged Hezekiah and said, you are still trusting in this God. You see, wow, I destroyed all the neighboring uh, nations, I killed them all. Even these people also, I will kill you and I will kill all these people. Why are you trusting in that God? What happened to the other gods in with the other nations, uh, what they did, uh, who believed? Uh, did I not destroy them? Now we want to break away the faith of King Hezekiah. But King Hezekiah was not only a king, he was a king that feared God. And immediately what he did, uh, he did not say, oh, let me go to my brother, let me go to my friends, let me ask for counsel. Like who? Like Solomon's son. You know what Solomon's son did? Rehoboam, when there was a problem, instead of going and asking with the elders who were with King Solomon, he went and uh, asked counsel from his friends. And what counsel they gave him? They gave him wrong counsel. He lost the kingdom. He lost his life. He lost everything. That's why you must be very careful who gives you counsel. Amen. But the Bible says that the counsel of the Lord endures for ever. And clearly what happened? We see... He went and fled before the presence of God, King Hezekiah and said, Oh God, you are the Lord who sees what is this king saying. What is he boasting about? For we know that they are not uh, gods, but they are the gods of the flesh. But you are the God of the spirit. And immediately what God did? The Bible says uh, in Isaiah chapter 37, it says clearly that the angel of the Lord came in the night uh, and killed uh, 185. 185,000 were slain in a single night. What one angel did? Then the angel of the Lord. See, then the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Asherian 185,000. And when the people arose early in the morning, they were the cops all dead. 
Now that person is boasting of his strength, is boasting of his chariot, is boasting of his all. That's what the psalmist tell him. So some trust in chariots and some trust in all this, but we trust in the Lord. So he was boasting. Why he was boasting? Because he was able to destroy all the neighboring kingdoms. It's true, it happened. The Assyrian was one of the most powerful king during the time of King Hezekiah. But he did not know that behind King Hezekiah is the God of all flesh. So Hezekiah did not go and say, oh now let me ask another king like how today we are seeing in the war. They are asking people of different nations to help you, Ukraine. Ukraine is asking, please send me this, please send me that, please send me this and all the people are helping Ukraine to fight against Russia. But King Hezekiah did not go to the neighboring kingdoms and ask for help. He said, let me go before the presence of God. And he put forth his pity. He said, God, you are the Lord who you are. Listen to what the rebuke of this king of Assyrian is telling about you. He is not telling about me. If he is telling about me, for me no problem. But he is telling about you. It is time for you to show your power. It is time for you to show your majesty. It is time for you to show your strength to this uh, gentle king and immediately the bible says okay don't worry king Hezekiah you go to sleep well my angel is there I am sending one he will do the job and what happened one angel was ready there to do the job and what the angel did the bible says it killed in the camp of the Assyrian 185,000 and the people arose early in the morning they were all cops they were all dead bodies with that what happened you know the king ran away the king ran away to his country and while he was worshipping his God, two of his sons came from behind, they took the knife and they chopped off his head. You see, my brother and sister in Christ, what we understand, it is who we trust in. And today the Lord is telling, trust not on your understanding, do not trust on your intellectual, do not trust as, oh, I'm a, I have wisdom, I have this, I am a genius, I am this, I am that. Nothing of that will work out. Your certificates will not uh, take you to the place where God wants you. Because many people, they trust in their qualification. Many trust in their education. Oh, I got this, I got that, I got this. Oh, with my education, with my intelligence, with my wisdom, I will get the best job. Other people who have nothing, they have better position, but they are still searching for a job. Why? Because now you are depending upon your qualification, you are depending upon your intelligence, you are depending upon your wisdom, your knowledge, and you think you are something great. But when you say, Lord, this is not my certificate, Lord, it's nothing of me, Lord, you, I want your favor, your grace, I'll tell you something. God will move in a mighty way, and he will give you that job which you desire. When you humble yourself and when you say that you are nothing in the eyes of God. He says, Lord, it's only your grace. It's only your favor, Lord. It's not my qualification. It's not my subject. It's nothing to do with me. It's only you. If you say anyone has to obey and immediately you will see where God wants you to take you to the next level. Sometimes we boast of ourselves. That's why the Bible says, let a man not boast in his wisdom and knowledge. But he who boasts, let him boast of the Lord. He let him not glorify himself. But he who glorifies, let him glorify God, my brother and sister, when you start glorifying God, God will glorify you in your situation. God will glorify you in your job. God will give you the job which you expect. Only when you humble yourself and says, God is not me, but Christ that lives in me. That's what Paul was saying. You think Paul was a stupid person? Paul education was up till PhD. I was under the tutor called Gamaly. But in the book of Philippines, he is telling, oh, my education I consider to be rubbish. Amen. You say, it is not to me, but you, Christ that liveth in me. And it is only through Christ, oh, I can do all things, he said. He did not say, he was an intelligent person. He was jealous for the law of his father. He was a very educated person. No one could stand before Paul. He was educated, highly educated. But the knowledge I gained to me, he said, the knowledge that I gained to me, I considered itself to be rubbish for the sake of Christ. Till that knowledge went off from him, God did not use Paul as a mighty evangelist, my brother and sister. Unless he had to forsake certain things, he had to reject all those things. Is thus when God used him, hallelujah, my brother and sister in Christ, that's what. So do not depend on your understanding. Do not depend on your wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Oh, I am a great, I am thinking, I can do anything. I can be successful in any interview because I have studied this, I have intellectual wisdom. You will go to thousand interviews, you will not get the job. Because what God opens, 
no devil can shut if god has shut it no one on this planet earth can open it Amen. so sometimes god will teach you a lesson unless you humble yourself and says god it is not me it's only you that's what even god taught nebuchadnezzar a lesson he was like a wild beast in the forest until he humbled himself god the lord who created the heaven and the earth and everything when he started acknowledging god the bible says he was restored back to his human form but before that there was pride in king nebuchadnezzar because he was the most powerful and most uh, most powerful king during the time of babylon his heart was lifted up when he was on the terrace and immediately what happened his figure totally changed everywhere he started to grow and he became a, a wild beast among the animals eating grass till uh, he realized his mistake he humbled himself before god and said god you are the one who created the heaven and the earth without you i can do nothing Yes, that's when God restored him back to his position. My brother and sister in Christ, what you understand by this? That's why we must trust in the Lord and not lean on our own understanding, not lean on our own wisdom, knowledge, and intellectual, but depend upon God for everything. Let His grace, let His favor be upon your life, and God will lift you up from your position.